Good afternoon. afternoon. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Welcome to Calvary Lutheran Church for this, our worship service, celebrating the second Sunday after Christmas. This day, we will follow the order of service as found printed inside the service folder. We'll begin with our opening hymn, Break Forth, O Beauteous Heavenly Light, number 44. Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and also with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church and all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. 
The Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, you crown our life with your love. You take away our sin. You comfort our spirit. You make us pure and holy in your sight. You did not spare your only Son, but gave him up for us all. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. O Son of God, eternal word, of the Father, you came to live with us, you made your Father known, you washed us from our sins in your own blood, you are the King of glory, you are the Lord. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled us with the new light of the word who became flesh and lived among us. Let the light of our faith shine in all that we do. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first lesson this day comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, reading verses 1 through 7. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will make your descendants very numerous. Abram fell on his face. God spoke with him. He said, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. Your name will not be Abram anymore, but your name will be Abraham, for I have made you the father of a large group of nations. I will make you extremely fruitful, and I will produce nations from you. Kings will come out of you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you as an everlasting covenant throughout their generations. I will be your God and the God of your descendants after you. This is the word of our Lord. We continue with our Psalm of the Day, Psalm 148, found on page 121 in the front of the hymnal. of the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights above. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His heavenly hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Forever let us sing the goodness of the Lord. Praise the Lord from the earth, lightning and hail, stormy winds that do His bidding. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, 
wild animals and all cattle, small creatures and flying birds of the earth and all rulers on earth, young men and maidens, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his splendor is above the earth and the heavens. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Forever let us sing the goodness of the Lord. Our second lesson this day comes from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 4, reading verses 4 through 7. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son to be born of a woman, so that he would be born under the law, in order to redeem those under the law, so that we would be adopted as sons. And because you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts to shout, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if you are a son, then you are also an heir of God through Christ. This is the word of our Lord. Alleluia. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. His words are written that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. Please rise out of respect to the gospel of our Lord. Our gospel comes from the book of Luke, chapter 1, reading verses 68 through 75. Blessed is the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited us and prepared redemption for his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, just as he said long ago through the mouth of his holy prophets. He raised up salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us in order to show mercy to our fathers by remembering his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to Abraham our father, to grant deliverance to us from the hand of our enemies so that we are able to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness, before him all our days. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our next hymn, Now Sing We Now Rejoice, number 34.
My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the portion of scripture for our consideration this day is our second lesson from Paul's letter to the Galatians. And in that letter, Paul is addressing a fact that most people don't want to particularly dwell too heavily on, especially not at the start of a fresh new year. He is addressing the fact that this world and all of us who live in it are prisoners of sin. We are bound in chains and slaves to sin. It's not exactly the bright, cheerful outlook for the start of a year that most people want to have, but really the reason people don't want to face it is actually much bigger than that. The truth is, for everyone still bound in chains and still a part of that prison, they don't recognize it as a prison. They don't see the bars and the chains for what they are. Because the world and our sinful nature like it. Sin, a lot of times, feels good. It's fun. It lets us satisfy whatever cravings or desires we may have. It lets us put ourselves first. It tells us we don't even have to love anyone else unless we want to. We can do what we want. We can say what we want. We can be who we want. It's all fine. The appeal and allure of sin is such that while we are in it, we want to spend the rest of our lives there. Our sinful nature loves that prison, loves those chains. And the cruel reality is that we only see the horrible consequences of sin when it is too late. Because our sinful nature wants to spend our life living in sin, and then only when we die do we see what sin has brought, that death. And the death that comes after as we are sent to hell, eternally destroyed for living in those chains. It's a problem that is so big we cannot handle it and so enticing that we don't want it handled. So God, in his mercy and love, stepped in to save. As Paul puts it, but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son to be born of a woman so that he would be born under the law in order to redeem those under the law so that we would be adopted as sons. When the time had fully come, the Lord let an awful lot of time pass between when he first promised to save and when he sent that Savior. But that time was not wasted or forgotten. It was time preparing. It was time setting everything into position to be just right so that God could save and redeem his people. And he did that by sending his own son to be born of a woman. Now that phrase probably doesn't jump out at us as a big deal. He was born of a woman. Yes, this child laying in a manger was born of a woman. That's the case for each and every one of us here too. We were born of a woman. That's normal for human beings. But it isn't normal for God. 
we all had to be born to come into existence. God existed from eternity. That God himself would be born of a woman. This is really quite astonishing. God would humble himself in such a way. Would make himself that little bit lower so as to become flesh and blood. He would humble himself so that he could become under the law to redeem those under the law. That's another phrase that maybe seems so innocuous, but God being under the law, that is mind-boggling as well. God isn't under the law because the law is his. He is the one with authority. The law comes from him. God can't be the one under the law. He is above the law. The law in its entire existence is framed around and serves him. And yet that's what God does. He puts himself under the authority of the law. Puts himself under that law the same way all of his fallen creation are under that law. And he did so to redeem us. Which, again... Man, that's a powerful statement. Imagine how frustrated and angry you would be if you had to pay for things you already owned. <laughs> things that are yours. And now you've got to buy them back. We would be outraged but not our God. He looks at the price that must be paid and he in love pays it. And it is an incalculable price indeed. The price he pays is his own son. The price that is paid is the holy precious blood of God himself there at the cross. The price that is paid is the sacrifice of the innocent, holy, perfect life of Jesus Christ. It's a price that is dear to God. His most precious treasure, his son. And yet he pays it in love and mercy for us so that he might buy us back, might break those chains of sin, might free us from that prison we were contained in, might rescue, redeem, restore. And as our Lord buys us back, he doesn't even buy us back to be servants in his household. He buys us to be his sons and heirs. God redeems us and frees us from sin and makes us his own family. And this is the loving kind of family. He wants us to call him Abba, Father. It's the way a little child cries out to their father. And when we do so, we know that our God will respond to us with even more love and mercy and compassion and kindness than any earthly father ever could. Our God saw through the problems we had, saw, 
saw the solution we needed, saw how much it would cost him. And he loved us enough to do it all. He loved us enough to pay the price. He loved us enough to save us even when we were not asking to be saved because he knew we needed it. He knew what was necessary for us. And he loved us. My brothers and sisters, this is the great gift God gave to us at Christmas. This is the reason we can go forward into our new year and know it is a happy one. Our God loved us enough to break those chains of sin, to free us from that prison, to redeem us through sending of his Son. May we go forth rejoicing that we can call God Father, and we know he loves to hear, to answer, to receive us. God sent his son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under the law. That is his great Christmas gift to us. That is our reason for rejoicing in the new year and on for eternity. Let us thank and praise him for freeing us from our bondage to sin by sending us Jesus. Amen. The peace of God surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Please rise as we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated.
please rise and join me in praying responsibly the prayer for Christmas. It's found printed in the service folder. Dear Father, we rejoice to hear the good news of great joy that a Savior has been born for us. For fulfilling your prophecies and in the fullness of time sending your Son to be our Savior, we give you our heartfelt thanks and praise. And to us a child is born, unto us a son is given. What a great mystery of our faith this is, that God has become fully human for our salvation. Even though he is the all-powerful Lord of all, he is wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Help us always believe that this precious child was born as our substitute to be our Savior. In the midst of our joy, we grieve for the many people of our world who do not know that Jesus has come to bring them forgiveness and healing. As the shepherds spread abroad the good news of the birth of the Savior born for all the world, may we also make use of the unique opportunities this holiday presents to tell others of what we have seen and heard concerning the child. Grant that the true peace between God and fallen mankind may comfort all people. As the angels sang out their praise, move us also to sing out our praise to you, today and every day, as the joy of Christmas remains in our hearts. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. We pray also the prayer that you taught us, Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. When the time had fully come, he sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the Earth is full of your glory. You are my God, and I will exalt you. I will give you thanks, for you have become my salvation. Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole is full of your glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O 
Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. You may be seated. This time we invite all those who are members of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod to come forward and receive the true body and blood of the Lord. Please rise. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He renews his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, Alleluia, Alleluia. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our closing hymn, Once Again My Heart Rejoices, number 37.
Once again, good afternoon to all of you. Pleasure worshiping with you here today. Also, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. A reminder, this week we will be starting up our Zoom Bible study again. If you would like to join us and are going through the Psalms on that uh, and are not already on the email list, let me know. If you are on the email list, look forward to receiving an email from me about that later this week. As you go about your weeks, let us go forward rejoicing in God's great gift to us, that wondrous mystery that he sent his son to be born of the woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, so that we might become the sons and heirs of God, those with the full rights to call God Abba Father, those who can truly rejoice at our God's overwhelming love for us. God's blessings on your week.